Hello and welcome to the Friday, January 5th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today's episode is a little bit heavy on patches, starting with patches for Wireshark. Wireshark released updates for all three currently supported versions. These updates fix a number of security vulnerabilities. All of these security vulnerabilities are classified as a denial of service. If your Wireshark instance is parsing a crafted packet, it may crash. Of course, there's always a small chance that some of them could potentially be used for code execution, but none of the advisories for these vulnerabilities indicate that. And Google released updates for Android as well as Chrome. Nothing really sort of out of the ordinary here. The Android patches fix a about 50 different vulnerabilities. The only critical vulnerabilities are in closed source Qualcomm components. And actually the majority of the vulnerabilities are in these Qualcomm closed source components. Also some open source components that are interacting with Qualcomm chips. And the Google Chrome update does not fix any zero days, so nothing really too much to worry about. Just uh, make sure that the auto update works. So once a day, keep reminding yourself to restart Google Chrome or any other browser you're using. Not quite as widely used as Chrome or Android, but nevertheless important and frequently exploited in the past is Ivanti's EPM, their endpoint management software. Ivanti released an update, update 5 for version 2022, that fixes a single vulnerability, CVE 2023-39366. This is a SQL injection vulnerability that can lead, according to Avanti, to output without the need for authentication. The patch is rated uh, critical because the information being leaked via the SQL injection or exploit can then be used uh, to control any machine that is uh, being uh, controlled by this particular Ivanti EPM instance. In some cases, this can then also lead to remote code execution on the core server. So definitely, if you're running Ivanti EPM 2021 or 2022, then uh, please update. And we got a couple of malicious packages again. First of all, Python, three malicious packages were identified in PyPy by Fortinet. They all include crypto coin miners. Kind of interesting that they sort of install a malicious payload in stages. So the actual package is not containing all the malicious code, likely to evade detection. Instead, it then on import loads additional malicious code from a website, a little bash script that then installs the uh, crypto coin miner. Not sure how much that actually helps because kind of reaching out during uh, the import process to a URL, I would consider that a little bit suspicious and looks like uh, anti-malware tools have a pretty good handle on some of these uh, payloads. And secondly, well, if uh, Python has an issue, NPM can't be far behind. Uh, NPM had actually a little bit an interesting, different issue, more like a prank. Someone uh, did publish an everything package. This everything package has one simple payload. It installs every possible NPM package. And while this itself is, well, in its worst case, just uh, causing the system that's running this everything package uh, to freeze. It also apparently prevented authors of these packages that are being included by everything from unpublishing their packages because they were now a requirement to uh, the everything package. Interesting issue, but uh, not really all that uh, malicious. 
Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. I also would like to thank any listeners who occasionally like reach out and uh, provide me links to stories or other feedback uh, to the podcast. Always appreciate it. And I hope I'm able to also incorporate some of that feedback in the podcast. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.